Studios. This is News 12 at 10. Welcome to News 12 at 10. I'm Brenda Teal. And I'm Jeff Eliasoff. This month marks 10 years since family and friends last heard from Molly Miller and Colt Haynes. The two were last seen in a car chase through Love County. That car crashed and though it was found weeks later, Molly and Colt were nowhere to be found. News 12's Caroline Clewis Fletcher has been looking into the facts of this case. Why the man last seen with the two was never arrested in their disappearance and the emergence of a new suspect. That infamous car chase began here in Wilson and led local police down this highway and into Love County. The car with driver James Connip and passengers Molly Miller and Colt Haynes crashed in this area near Long Hollow Road. It's farmland for sure, but it's not desolate. And for Molly and Colt to totally disappear is unlikely. Captain Parsons said that he had gotten really close, that he'd actually tapped the other car um, and then got dusted out and lost the tail light. Wilson Police Chief Kevin Coley had just started as an officer working for the department in 2013 when the call came in about a car chase. I took Highway 76 straight straight south and the radio was quite uh, busy at the time. Coley says it was several days later when that chase was connected to Molly and Colt's disappearance. Trying to weed through what was bad information and what was good information was very overwhelming at first. Coley says from calls to the station to gossip during traffic stops, everyone had information they wanted officers to look into. Coley says he and the other officers drove to Norman, Wichita Falls, and more to interview people who claimed to have firsthand knowledge, but it was always hearsay. No one would admit to seeing anything firsthand. Of course, that was wasting our time at that time because we could have been on the other lead, which might have been you know, a good lead or something at the time. If a witness says that they, they saw something or heard something and it doesn't really comport with the rest of the evidence that is known to us that is really kind of irrefutable, well then that's obviously a red flag that this person is not telling the truth. District Attorney Craig Ladd says when alleged witnesses do come forward, he and investigators have to make sure they're credible. And a lot of times that's why we have to be kind of close to the vest about what's going on with the investigations. In the event that somebody like that comes forward, then we can uh, properly and better assess the reliability of what it is that they're saying. And if they know facts that only the investigators know, then that tells us, well, maybe they really know something here. As district attorney, Ladd is ethically obligated to only charge someone with a crime once there's probable cause. But he says realistically, it takes more than probable cause to prove a case to a jury beyond reasonable doubt. In this case, uh, the criminal investigation never developed to the point where it was time for me to make that decision about whether or not there was sufficient evidence. Even the investigators were saying there's just, we, we can't get reliable information in regards to exactly what happened and who is responsible for it. Obviously the name Connip came up quite a bit because he was the last person that was seen alive with them. Uh, I did have sufficient evidence to prosecute him for the high speed chase and I prosecuted him to the fullest extent of the law. Ladd says phone calls from Molly and Colt after that chase show that when Nip left the scene, they were still alive. Con Nip was talking to people that, that made statements while these people were on the, these were friends and, and of, of Colt and Molly that were looking for them because they were lost and Colt and Molly had called these friends to come get them. And we know that Con was not with them whenever Colt and Molly were calling for their friends to come get them. We know Con got home and Colt and Molly were still alive because there were three witnesses that showed up at the house where Con was living that were out looking for Colt and had him on the phone and they've given full statements. James Con Nip didn't return my messages, but Gary Henry is an attorney who's worked to get Nip an interview with investigators last fall in hopes of clearing him as a suspect. Despite this, Henry maintains he's not Nip's attorney. Because at this point, Con Nip is really not a suspect. He really doesn't need a lawyer. Why do you think there's been so much attention on Mr. Nip? The social media, TV shows, podcasts, all this mounted so much towards Con Colby and, and then Joe Russell that, that it drowned everything else out. Henry says evidence uncovered by an investigator points to a totally different suspect. He has been interviewed. Well, he has been interviewed, yes, and he has, I will, I will say, he has made some tacit admissions uh, in and of themselves, not enough to do anything with other than point further in the direction of the 
where the investigation needs to go. While Henry named this new suspect and several law enforcement sources confirmed to me that he is a person of interest, News 12 policy dictates that we don't name suspects until charges are filed. Those same sources tell me they think charges could be filed soon. And News 12 will be there with updates when it happens. In Ardmore, reporting with photojournalist Kelby Archer, Caroline Clues Fletcher, News 12. Great job on that.